<laughs> Eugene Levy joins us now. We are uh, oh, so honoured to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah. Always Great fun time. Yeah. to be back in London. I was hoping to hook up for lunch with King Charles. <laughs> While I was here, I heard he's a big American Pie fan. <laughs> uh, but they won't put me through, so I, uh, yeah, I It'll, can't figure that we'll out. We'll get a message to him, don't worry. <laughs> Your series, The Reluctant Traveller, what made me laugh the most is Apple TV phoning you and you kept saying, you're not the man for the job. I could not have said more, no times, uh, for more times uh, for this thing. And, you know, the odd thing was, when I got a call for the show, it was a show about hotels. You're in. Around the world, exotic hotels oh, no. that Apple TV Plus wanted you to host. And, you know, when you first hear it, you go, wow, that's something. Yeah. Until it started to settle. And I'm realizing, why are they calling <clears throat> me, number one? Number two, I, I'm not fond of traveling. Mm -hmm. Number three, I'm not, I'm really not a curious person. <laughs> it's sad to say. <laughs> And I have a very low sense of adventure. I don't, you know, and I'm thinking, well, aren't these uh, qualities you need to host a travel show like this? So I said, guys, you, you've got the wrong person here, honestly. I, I think there's probably better people. And then they wanted to have a conversation with me. They said, no, they want to talk to you directly. I said, well, how many times can I say no? <laughs> <clears throat> I said, but I'll talk to them. So then we get on the phone, and I'm running through my reasons why I'm not the person and I'm hearing laughs on the other end of the phone when I'm thinking, good, I'm making my point. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's nothing heavy here and, and, and you know, kind of keeping things light. And then after the call, apparently, the, uh, the Apple TV Plus exec and the producer called each other immediately and said, that's the show. <laughs> That's the show. The right guy for it's it. It's the travel show, but it's somebody who doesn't love to travel. That's the personality that we need and we should have on the show that separates it from other travel shows. And then they called back and pitched that to me. Yeah. And said, what if it's somebody who doesn't like to travel like yourself hosting this show? And I said, okay, I get that. That I understand. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it's still me. <laughs> and it's still a no, thank you very much. Hosting the show, but I got the concept. Yeah. It's funny, because I so a couple of my buddies worked on the show, and they, uh, I, so I only hooked up with them last week, and they told me the exact same story from the other way around. So the more you didn't want to do it, they'd put, you put the phone down, and they'd go, he has to do it. It's really, it's, it's I got funny, don't funny. know. Isn't in this business, it's like the strongest word is no. Yeah. Very true. Isn't so, it? Yeah. When you first started filming, did you then immediately decide, like, did you kind of get the travel bug straight away or did it take a while or do you still not have it? Oh, the travel bug? Mm -hmm. and don't quite have it mm. yet. I mean, the, you know, doing the show was fun, no question. But if you put it on a, a scale of one to 10, you know, the needle's kind of, you know, kind of going up to maybe somewhere between three and four. <laughs> okay. Now. Like, uh, if you were to ask me, you know, now having done the show for a season, what? what's the one place around the world you would really love to go to? I don't have one. Yeah. I mean, there's not one place I'd say, yeah, I gotta see this country. So what did you see that you were wowed by? Uh, to be honest, the one location that really um, surprised me was South Africa because I never wanted to go on safari. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel the need. Everybody who went there on safari and came back and said, this is one thing you got to do. You've got to go on safari. It's the greatest trip in the world to yeah. do that. I'm saying, yeah, but you know what? I, good for you. I, I, I know what they I look like. You can see like. the documentary. I know, what the, I know what they all look like. I know what the animals look like. Yeah. Do I need to see a giraffe running around the field? <laughs> and get up at 5 in the morning to do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, don't need to do that. But once I got there... It only took a few days before so it was like a miraculous thing where I just, uh, and uh, I was developing an affinity for the landscape and kind of the wildness in it, you Pretty know? special, right? And, um, and, and also kind of uh, visiting these uh, kind of rhino conservancies, mm -hmm. rehabilitation centers where they take orphan rhinos yeah. and injured rhinos from the poachers and hunters 
and you know, kind of get get them back on their feet in a, in, a, in this private private kind of conservation park. I I actually grew to love these animals, which I used to think were the ugliest animals <laughs> on the on the face of the earth. But I got to feed them and 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 you know, bottle feed them and and. It, it was like, and I'm thinking, okay, well, these a lot of these animals are close to extinction yeah. now, and I felt it over there, you know? Yeah, and yeah. if I hadn't gone, well, that's just a headline, right? Mm -hmm. Rhinos are close to extinction, and then you read it, and you go, yeah, that's really too bad, you know? But mm -hmm. honestly, it's sad. Where do you want to go for lunch? Today? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. 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 Would you, if they come and said, would you do a series two, would you do a series two? A second season on yeah. this? Oh, I loved. Don't get me wrong. I loved doing the show. I loved the. I loved the the crew. I loved the production team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're like they're friends now. So every time we get back together and do the show, it's like a big reunion, nice. you know, because we 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 tape two locations at a time, and then we get like a month and a half off. Yeah. So I love the process yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, over here, we've got a, a very successful Joe. It's, it's Bradley Walsh and his son, Barney, and they're called Breaking Dad. And I know that you're not, um, you, you know, you've worked with your son in Schitt's Creek. Yeah. Would you do like a Breaking Dad sort of show? Would you bring Dan on the, on the travel show with you next time? Dan doesn't need me. <laughs> well, he doesn't need me at all. We'd like and, to and see first, you together. First of all, he's, he's Daniel to me. Mm. He always was, but he's, he's now Dan Levy. Uh, and yet I have a, a problem calling him Dan, so uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel doesn't need me to, to, he's doing very well on his own. Would I love to do it? Yeah. Of course I'd love to do it. Because working with both my kids on Schitt's Creek was like the, oh, the biggest the highlight best. of my life. Yeah. And how many times does a father get to work with their kids? You know, I used to be envious of friends who were lawyers and yeah. doctors and their kids become lawyers and doctors. And I'm thinking, well, isn't it great to be able to sit around a dinner table and talk shop yeah. with your kids, you know? Just and to see them all the time every day. Well, and to be part of such a successful series as well, it just must have been so kind of heartwarming for you. It was, uh, it was, it was a great run and the way it worked out, um, where we, we hit our stride, we hit our peak right at the end of the series in a kind of record-breaking mm -hmm. Emmy night. Um, would much rather have had that going on than if the show had hit big in its first or second sure. season. And then, how do you keep yeah. topping yourself as the, you know, as the years kind of go on there, but. I've been asked to ask you this, could we expect a Schitt's Creek film? Well, um, you, you, you can expect it. You may not get it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I think, listen, we, we've, we've said we're always keeping things open. And, right. and, and, and Daniel himself has, uh, you know, has said that it really depends on the idea for what it is. Because whatever it is, it has to be, it has to elevate itself from the point sure. where, that we left off to the point where we're going to pick up, you know, it has to it has to keep moving up. Um, and when when we hit that idea, I think it's I definitely. Would we love to do it again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would we love to get back together with the cast again? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was just the best experience ever. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing nothing in the works right now. But absolutely, uh, it's something that we would love to do. He's got to go to the North Pole next for the second series, so he's got some time. <laughs> uh -huh. The Reluctant Traveller will be available on Apple TV Plus from Friday the 24th. Eugene, what a treat to meet you. Thank what you so treat. much. What a treat. Lovely meeting you both. I was watching old scenes from um, Armed and Dangerous last night with John Candy, <laughs> and I was literally rolling around in my hotel room. Oh, yeah, nice. it was brilliant. Absolutely nice, brilliant. And John Candy was yeah. brilliant, yeah. too. Yes. Honestly. Honest.